I'll play record, record. เอ่อบ่าจังยืนจองบ้านลิงก์ก็ปิ้นลิงก์ทางซูมนําบ่านะก็ปิ้นลิงก์ไลน์เอ่อซีบินลิงก์โอเคโอเคบ่าจบจบ
setting lights on uh, very baffled yet crucial topics. So without further delay, I will begin by asking you both a very simple question. First will be to Sambat. Sambat, uh, as you have been uh, contributing a lot to academic field as well as to research, so uh, how do you define intellectual and who are they based on your own definition? Uh, thank you, Bong. Uh, Bong Nisai for the invitation. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here with uh, you and uh, Dr. Kung Kung at, uh, on this interesting uh, online discussion uh, about the role of intellectuals in, in developing countries such as Cambodia. Uh, uh, for me, I, I would simply define intellectuals as uh, a person who possess a high level education and also actively engage in the process of learning and thinking and social discourse in the country. So uh, the reason that I, that I describe an intellectual in two parts is because in addition to knowledge, you also need to uh, actively engage in the process of uh, doing, doing research, publishing, uh, and basically engage in the, the uh, evolving process of uh, political, economic, or policy discourse in the country so that, so that you can contribute uh, your ideas, you can contribute your expertise, and play your role in whatever topic or whatever development issue that you are concerned with, that are, that are interesting, interesting mm -hmm. to you. That is, that is how I would uh, simply define an intellectual. Okay, thank you so much. I think that very good definition of intellectual. So what about Dr. Kim Kung's? Do you have the same idea or you might have different definitions of intellectuals based on your own term? Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you. Um, yeah, I agree with uh, Sambat uh, referred to people who have a high level of education. So I think simply put intellectual, we can say uh, refer to educated people in our language, Panya uh, Wan, so Panya so, uh, refer to knowledge or wisdom. So, however, the term here, uh, we, we use this term uh, because it had, you know, the history uh, of the term like intellectual, because I've done uh, some study on the definition of intellectual. I have written an article on mm -hmm. the role of intellectual in Cambodian society and uh, one source said that intellectual, the word intellectual come from a uh, uh, friend uh, referring to educated people who, who you know, care about society, who can speak uh, about the truth, who, who dare to intervene in, uh, you know, uh, social problems, speak about issues that happen in the society, meaning that they are educated and they want to contribute to society by uh, speaking up or, or uh, raising issue that concern uh, society, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so from this definition, I I feel that uh, kind of anybody can be intellectual if they are educated and they care about the society. Anybody care about society, but whether they they are to speak about what's happening or not, or they are interested in contributing or not. So we can say there are a different level of of people who are intellectual and who who can engage in you know, contribute, contribute your thing to society, yeah. Yeah, thank you. I can, I can, I can say actually there's, there's, there's two elements. Uh, first of all is the knowledge. They, they possess the knowledge and at the same time, they have willingness to take part in taking yeah, yeah. whatever role they have in shaping the future of the society. Yeah, yeah. You both gave us a very a good definition of intellectual. So now we know exactly is what intellectual what definition of the intellectual and then uh, who they are in particular so uh, my next questions uh, i'm just wondering uh, some but how have you accessed the current level of contribution of our intellectual who have made to the national development so far and have they have they been doing enough or they have to do more in your own observation because i think there are many of them out there, uh, and then the, they they have capacity at the same time they have knowledge to take part in this process. 
Thanks, Bong, for uh, the question. Uh, when it comes to um, how I would how I would assess uh, the level, uh, the role, or the level of the contributions or involvement that intellect that Cambodian in the intellectuals are making uh, to our country, uh, I would I would say that uh, there are a, a lot to be optimistic about, uh, and one of the reasons is because. Uh, our education system is is progressing, uh, it's moving forward. Uh, although we know that uh, we, we need to do more, but at least we, we know that our education system is, is going forward. And um, another part of the story is that uh, for the past 10 or uh, 10 or 15 years, we, has, we, have, we are seeing a, a, an increasing number of Cambodian students who not only uh, who, who, who get education who, who get educated locally but also uh, go to study abroad uh, uh, getting their uh, higher degree uh, from uh, outside of the country and, it, and this kind of people bring a different perspective because not only do they understand about their own country but also see what is out there and what may um, what may uh, be uh, chosen as a, as a as a role model, or, or, or what are the good things there? Are, what are the good things out there that can be uh, considered as a, a path for Cambodia? Uh, but well, so your, your your next part is uh, can, can you uh, repeat the next uh, the second part again? So I'm just I'm just wondering whether they have been doing enough, or maybe they need to do more. Mm -hmm. But uh, in, in terms of uh, whether they are doing enough or not. Uh, to be honest, I have no answer to that. But I would mm. what I say here is that uh, Cambodian intellectuals, uh, in terms of you know research institutions, uh, universities, and 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 those who are involved in the process of learning and thinking, uh, I mean this community is growing rapidly. Uh, specifically uh, from you know from the think tank industry, from uh, policy research, uh, from uh, schools, and. Uh, so intellectual in Cambodia are contributing in a lot of ways. For example, uh, first of all, they, they can uh, do research. I mean, like uh, scientific research based on facts and evidence and uh, methodologies. They can also uh, actively engage in conversation uh, like on public policy issues, on any social issue that, uh, that interests them. And they also uh, can raise the profile of our, of our country, for example, if there is a well-known intellectual in Cambodia who make strong impacts on uh, one subject in, in the region that can also raise uh, the image of Cambodia as a uh, evolving, as a rapidly evolving society that moved toward to, uh, to become a knowledge-based society. So, so uh, again, I do not have uh, yeah. the answer of uh, whether they are doing enough, but I'm, I'm uh, very optimistic about how we are going. Yeah. Thanks so much. I think it, it's always good to be optimistic about what we've been doing and the future uh, that we are going to have. And uh, I, I agree that uh, representing Cambodia in many different ways could be the, the most important contribution we all can make, especially being a scholar or at least regionally or internationally. Yeah, thank you. My next question will be to Bong Kum Kung. Uh, I think you also raised some uh, concern as well, not concern, but something that we have seen uh, or maybe we come into agreement that like there are different perspective on the role of intellectual in influencing social and economic change in our country. But some people have criticized educated Cambodians or intellectuals for having not been taking their role effectively to foster positive change. So the people see these things in this way. So what are your take on this? Okay, so uh, a simple answer is that uh, we need to look at our history, our recent history. Uh, research has shown that, like research uh, that have been conducted about research in Cambodia, is uh, one of the research say that uh, we, we face a challenge of having a lost generation of intellectual. A lot of educated people were killed, you know, during the Pol regime. So when we uh, emerged into uh, after the 1970, uh, 1979 and moving on to the 1920s, 
we uh, we we still face this issue that we don't have many intellectual and and there the those who remain who who survive the proper regime do not really dare to speak up because they're you know been defeated by the, the previous regime so they just want to survive want to live their life want to to support their family don't want to involve in politics or social issue so that can say that in terms of their contribution, I agree with uh, uh, Sambat saying that uh, it's emerging, it, it increasing, but my assessment would be the contribution is limited, but emerging or increasing while limited, but it keep increasing because mm -hmm. uh, this is the trend of societies, social development, research in our, our country or you know university or higher education is growing, research institution are also growing. So we have more people who are educated from overseas or locally, and they are, they are trying to contribute to society. You know, when people are educated, they are naturally want to contribute to society. But this, this environment in the society may not allow them to do that. But in, I believe that the inside them, in, in inside, you know, they want to contribute in different ways. So people contribute to society through Maybe they work for the government, they contribute in that way. They work for the private sector, they contribute in, in that way as well. And other people work for NGO or for a think tank. So each of them have their own role to play. It's just that when we look at, we observe what's happening in society, somehow we feel that, okay, we don't have many intellectuals who, who you know, talk about social issues or who would like to contribute. In, in a public way, what we call public intellectual, mm -hmm. those who are educated, but would like to also always talk about issue of that, that is cons of concern to the whole society. So overall, uh, I can say that uh, it it's getting better now. More and more people would like to, you know, uh, uh, contribute uh, in different ways through uh, in terms of research or writing we can see that more people even young researcher who are you know bachelor degree student or those who are who have just finished their bachelor they start to to contribute as well and people start talking about scholar or you know i or scholar or yeah. education scholar because we believe that the who who conduct research write research and share their opinion, talk about issue happening in society. Uh, we believe that there are, you know, kind of scholar or intellectual, a group of educated people who, who, who would like to contribute to society. Yeah. Yeah. My next question will be to some, but I think uh, Kong also raised some issue, for example, like people can work in different fields. They can work for governments. They've they, they, they can work in uh, 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 non-government organization or they can work in public, uh, sorry, private sectors. But between working for the government and also for the private sector, which one do you think that is the best choice for intellectual if they wish to make greater contribution to a positive development of the country? I think it might be, there's no black and white answer, but I think to you, you might have seen the best way that they can contribute. Uh, again, uh, for uh, I, I uh, would say that uh, to decide which sector is is uh, is the best option for uh, for for you, it still depends on your. Uh, it depends on a lot of a lot of factors. For example, uh, it depends on personality. It depends on uh, financial condition. It depends on uh, what you uh, what your next step. Would, would would be and it also depends on the uh, the kind of working environment that you think you would be able to fit in so for example in my case uh, for example for example in my case uh, I'm, I'm working at the moment I'm working at a think tank and the, yeah. and the reason that I work for a think tank is because the think tank is a, is a deeply intellectual space where we focus mainly on doing research we are doing a capacity building program and also we are actively engaged in discussion so for example uh, i'm mainly involved uh, in discussions on cambodia policy on cambodia defense policy and also on asean as well and a little bit on us and china competition so because 
uh, the reason that I find that working uh, working at a think tank is a is a rewarding experience at the moment is because uh, it gives me uh, a, 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 a an intellectual space for me to not only engage but also immerse myself and and build networks with other with other scholars who are more senior than myself. And but at the same time, for me, besides working at think tank, I also teach at a public university, and that is just another way that I can contribute. Uh, to uh, in in a small way uh, to to Cambodia through educate through education uh, through uh, knowledge sharing and through experience sharing with uh, uh, with, with junior people. Uh, so again, it it goes back to what you like and what you don't like, uh, the kind of environment and your and and a, and a lot on your personal situation at the moment. But any 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 uh, I would say that any sector that makes you happy and and make you feel satisfied with what you're doing is the best choice mm -hmm. yeah thank you so much regardless of where you work at so it's a, the only thing is based on your own preference and personality so anything that you like you can do best and contribute more yeah that would be a, a great answer i think the same question would go to you but i think you might have something to add or maybe you think that maybe the other sectors for example, like private sector may be more important while the country is moving in a, a, a fast pace at the moment. Okay, I, I, I somehow agree with uh, what uh, somebody have mentioned. Uh, it depends on your interest, your situation, you know. However, uh, generally, I can say that if you are an intellectual and you work for a big company or for the government, you might contribute more to society because of the impacts of what you're doing. For example, if you're working for, uh, like you are intellectual, you work for the Ministry of Education, you in sport, for example, and then you were in the government, you probably contribute to policy making, policy formulation, design the policy, a national policy. So national policy, when you, we implement that, it would have greater impact than you work for an institution, for example, an intellectual working for a university and what he or she can do would contribute to policy at the an institutional level, university level. So the impact would be not as large or as significant as the working, you know, at the top. However, uh, while while like this, we we you know we can say that they are, each of them have have their own role to play in contributing to society in different way you know, at the national level, at uh, uh, institutional level or individual level. So taking my case uh, at the moment, I'm also working for the Ministry of Education, UN Sport. So I'm, I'm contributing to, you know, kind of work or policy at the national level. But at, at the same time, I'm also teaching. So I'm contributing to my university. And at my personal level, you know, I'm in contact with a lot of researcher, a lot of junior researcher, young researcher helping them, you know, so kind of, if, if we are doing our best, we can contribute a lot to society in different ways, personal, you know, uh, professional, institutional, or, or at, at a, a national level. Yeah. So, so uh, to sum up, it's like, it's like if you, you're working in, in a big, you know, institution or think tank, you know, you likely have more contribution to society because of the impact of your institution. For example, you're working for a think tank, uh, two think tank, one is like a big in the country, one is like smaller, nobody really knows. So your work would, would be perceived differently and would reach different people, different audience. So that can be, can be, can define your contribution as well. However, like again, everyone have their own a level of contribution and uh, can have more than just one level can be a different level yeah yeah my my follow up question Mokdum Kung, i think you have been doing a lot in 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 uh, contributing to the process for example in academic field you also co-found the publishing side that involve young people who want to rise and then share their opinions and build research skill and at the same time you pursue your own academics and professional works so how you found yourself in 
a, a, a place where you face so many challenges because other people also want to do the same because some people might question the level of contribution they might have. So your own experience, your own ways of dealing with things might share a lot of great assistance to them. And then they can do the same as you, not in the, the same way, but at least the amounts of work that they can contribute. Yeah, I, I think it, it uh, go back to the our interest and our commitment. For example, I'm, I'm interested in uh, promoting research in our country. So I did my PhD on, uh, you know, finding out what can we do to promote research, uh, you know, in our country, especially research among a university lecturer. So I'm doing this for a few years and my interest in research, in promoting research, especially among our Cambodian researcher, uh, grow day by day. So this gives me kind of uh, more motivation to, to contribute, even though I spend a lot of time, you know, helping other people. Uh, but at the, at the end of the day, somehow we can, when we see people grow, for example, some people who don't know research, but after going through, you know, my support or my team support or other activity that we try to promote research, they are, they are, we can see that their skill or the knowledge about research, you know, develop, and that give, you know, that give me some satisfaction. Kind of, okay, I I sacrifice my time, energy, but at the end we can see people growing, uh, learning. So kind of compensate your feeling that you you are interested and you committed to to in, doing that. So, but there are challenges, you know, uh, especially in terms of time in terms of resources, for example, if you spend a lot of time helping other people, you would lose time helping yourself or doing other activity that can maybe generate income or, or money to support your family. So kind of difficult aspect, but uh, because I can see that a lot of people are interested in writing, writing opinion pieces or uh, conducting research. So as an intellectual, I can say I'm intellectual because I'm you know, kind of educated people as well. So try to support in my own way, uh, personally and professionally, uh, contribute to what I know to to society through you know this this way. Because other people would would have done would have contributed to society in their own way. You know, uh, through their own platform. But what I can do is is you know creating a platform where I can keep contributing, uh, helping other people. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Wangkim Kongs. I think uh, there might be another question on finance and some sort of in financial <laughs> incentive for people who have been doing this. So in the next question will be that. Uh, maybe uh, maybe i like to interrupt you and link that to the question about the earlier question about contributing to of intellectuals to society. And it linked to what I've been doing re research about this as well. Uh, the, the issue is linked with finance that you mentioned. We, what we do, what a lot of people do, intellectual or not intellectual, they try to do to, you know, do something just to get, you know, salary or income to support themselves and their family. So they are focused on that more than anything else. So this doesn't give them time to contribute to society in in you know in a more substantial way. So. We need to balance between helping ourselves, uh, you know, working to get income to support family or, or work for survival and, and, and also whether you can have time or energy to help other or to talk about issues that, that have a lot of concern or, or concern everybody in society. So, yeah, that's a major factor in defining whether or uh, determining whether an intellectual can contribute to society or not, or to what extent can they contribute? Yeah, that's right. I think uh, we are we all are busy earning, mm. yeah, to yeah. to make sure that we have enough. That's one of the thing. Well, Thombat, I think one question just came up to my mind. I think it's just like going back to the the previous part we talked about the. Uh, the definition of the intellectual, but I think it, it was mentioning this because I've been talking to some people and especially young people, maybe they're uh, they're uh, recent graduates, 
and uh, still continue studying at university level because you are meeting the student, you're teaching them. So some people might have skepticism about their own contribution they can make to the society. I think they want to have in their own way, but they're still questioning what role I can play, what role I can do in this small part, small portions that they could contribute to whatever situation they have or the, the country uh, moving forward and so on. So I, I, can, I can ask you a, a, a thought question is, what simple way you suggest those people to consider when it comes to being in their own position as a university student or maybe just a, a grade 12 graduate? Uh, that is an, an interesting question. Uh, I believe that there are many ways uh, for, uh, for young people, uh, particularly undergrad students who are currently enrolled in school or who are uh, approaching the graduation. Uh, I think that one of the first and, and most important way uh, for them, that uh, one of the most important way that they should do to contribute to Cambodia is to educate themselves. Mm. That, that is the first step. They should educate themselves. They should uh, try to uh, perform and do their best in school. Uh, of course, degree does not determine our destiny. It does not yeah, determine yeah. what we can and cannot do. That is uh, just uh, uh, to be clear with that. But I believe that education can 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 enable them. You know, education can enable them to do a lot when they get out of school. So if they get out of school with a firm foundation, uh, intellectual foundation, they can contribute in many different ways, uh, which we just talked about. Uh, uh, anyone, everyone can do what he or she is interested in, and uh, depending on a lot of conditions. Uh, so besides educating themselves, I would say that there are many ways. For example. A young uh, youth can engage in a policy discourse, like uh, Bong Kum Kum mentioned. They can, uh, like for the past several years, I have noticed as well that there has been an increasing, uh, let's say, traction among mm -hmm. undergrad students who want to write, who mm -hmm. want to, uh, uh, to to involve in whether writing op ed, or commentary article, who want to uh, join seminar, who want who want to join public forum just to be there to mm -hmm. experience. Uh, what the forum is about to to immerse themselves uh, deeply into different kind of uh, issues that uh, that interest them, and besides that, they also uh, can can run their own project. For example, yeah. it could be a social project on mental health, for example, on the environment, on bridging the gap, a uh, digital gap between urban and rural. So th these are just uh, a few example only, but there are a, a lot more that they, that youth can do. So uh, just to recap what I just said. Uh, they should educate themselves, uh, do their best in school, perform, try to perform well in school so that education can enable them to contribute. And once they get out of school, they can, uh, uh, of course, uh, get a good, uh, get, uh, contribute through their jobs, running social projects, and uh, also uh, engage in the, the, in the policy discourse through writing, through speaking, and through uh, uh, being aware of what is going on in their community and what is going on with uh, concerning the issues that they care about. Yeah, that's great. So all about uh, uh, education and they must actually prioritize education first before they can do more. Thank you so much. I think that's also interesting for our young people out there who are watching our program today. Uh, my next question will be to Bong Kum Kung again. I think uh, you also raised uh, some sort of interesting point in your own article because I read it. Your your mm -hmm. your your the article titled "The Role of Public Intellectual in Cambodian Society." Uh, one point you raised very in, 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 intriguing, and also I believe that also thought provoking as well. For example, and I quote: "One of the best ways for forward for scholar who wish to work in the government is to learn to observe, listen, to take notes, not judge." They should not try to focus on negativity or problem too much, but instead try to see the bright side. Be open-minded, positive, forward-looking. It is important to demonstrate competent commitment, integrity, rather than incompetent judgment and criticism. Can you explain this point a bit further? Do you mean that intellectuals should not be critical of any sort for the government works or policy, or you mean differently? 
Okay, so thank you for reading that article. Actually, it, it's not entirely my own idea. I, you know, I, I uh, joined a workshop or like a sharing session and uh, intellectual like uh, people talk about that and I just quote uh, what to say in that article. But what uh, that quote means is that uh, not to be too heavily negative about what's happening in society. Like in Khmer, we uh, have a chunk of book or just always negative. Yeah. So if you do that, you kind of shut the door to positivity. Maybe something happening and it's good thing, but you don't see the good thing in, in that. You keep uh, criticizing or looking at, at only bad thing, being critical of what's happening. So. But the best way to do that is to be kind of balanced, uh, even though uh, you see that is the issue, but probably you can look beyond the issue and look at the opportunity. However, uh, it doesn't mean that you close your eye and then always see positivity. I think the best way uh, in this issue is that to be balanced. If you see the issue, you need to raise the issue because part of the definition of intellectual is that you are educated and you are you you have concern for society you you want to to uh you know speak the truth or expose lies what you see is the social injustice you can how can you contribute to addressing social injustice for example in society by not talking or not writing or keeping quiet if you do that, you're not contributing to society and your role as intellectual is very, very limited. Mm -hmm. So you need to contribute in a certain way. However, if you are too pessimistic, it's not good as well because uh, you, you bring more issue to society if you keep you know, criticizing all the time. So the better way is to criticize as well as you know, talk about good things, yeah, yeah. constructive criticism and find way you know, to contribute to to improve the situation by you know working with other people, for example, or or sharing your your understanding of the issue. What how can we attract the issue from your own perspective, from your you know what you have in your in your head? So uh, better than not talking or keeping quiet, you as an intellectual, you're supposed to contribute by speaking up or by writing. But in my case, I like to write rather than speak. I'm not good at speaking, so I want to write. But and writing is is good because you have time to think about what you want to to convey your message that you want con to convey to. So I, I believe that uh, through writing or through you know con contributing in this way, you you give your opinion to other people to look. Some will agree with you, some will disagree, but uh, don't you know care about that too much because your job is to contribute in the way that you would like to do and then let's see the impact of what you have done uh, on society or on other people yeah interesting so but i think the because mr bong kum kung already raised this and he also explains a little bit more about it's about balancing between negativity and how you see the society and and, and what you can do instead of just criticizing, but you present your own sort, maybe some sort of constructive criticism that could at least give solutions. Maybe it's not practical, but at least you're not just pointing out the problem. Do you, do you agree with this or you might have different idea when it comes to this kind of issue? But Mong, uh, what I would say is that uh, intellectual play, of course, they play a critical role in uh, contributing to society uh, through various ways which we've been talking about. Uh, oh, no matter what sector that you're working in, uh, you can play a role. You can make impacts, whether at the uh, local level, at the community level, at the national level, or above or beyond that. It's, it depends on you. Uh, but also, uh, this uh, I would say that there is a, uh, a, a tricky situation intellectual uh, for example on the one hand uh, when there are issues when there are policy concerns to be addressed mm -hmm. people look to the intellectual for facts for uh, for facts-based research for evidence and for uh, uh, rigorous methodologies to solve mm -hmm. issues based on their respective expertise yeah but at the same time 
uh, intellectual uh, also uh, bear the uh, responsibility to uh, to look at things and try to do what they can to address the issue, uh, whether that has to do with a sensitive or uh, a less sensitive issue. Uh, that, yeah, that's what that's I'm right. mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so while they 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 uh, they are they are expected to perform their role to contribute in uh, to to contribute intellectually, they also need to balance between you know, for example, if a person work in the government, of course it's going to be. Uh, 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 criticism from outside and, and that is okay that is a that is a normal process you know uh, this is that is a that's part of a, what i just what i always say uh social discourse there, yeah. there, there are people in government people outside with uh who are who have different perspective and they disagree a lot all the time and that is okay uh, but as an intellectual if, if you work in a government uh you also need to bring your expertise to the table but you also need to navigate the bureaucratic natures of your organization as well because mm -hmm. if you go just let's say uh completely or go against your organization that i wouldn't see that you'd last uh, uh you, you find you you would find it uh, uh quite challenging to to navigate the job and to maintain yeah. the job mm -hmm. but at the same time of course you, you need to navigate the situation uh, in a delicate way that you can it's keep your job important. contribute it and also uh yeah. pursue your interests as well that's great because you cannot actually achieve things overnight and you need to think in a long-term way. You cannot just do whatever you want to do and then, yes, you actually close the door and all end. Yes, thanks, but I think that's helpful. My next question, I believe, will be back to financial comparisons. I mean, most of us know that if you are being a researcher, like Sambat or Bong Kim Kong, I, I think I, you know exactly that you are engaging in a very important career. But at the same time, if you look at the incentive you, you will be getting, it's not actually equal to what you have done. So it means that you, you need to be mentally prepared for that. But not so many people, I think, be prepared for that. Maybe they, they keep comparing about what they get incentive they they actually receive or maybe the finance or wealth they can accumulate throughout the, the from day to day work that's why they are they are not able to do their part to help the society but i think uh, to some but what can be done to make sure that you are not comp keeping comparing to that and then prepare and understand that you're doing this because you want to have the country at the same time, okay, you want to fulfill your stomachs. It's, it is important too, but how to balance it? Uh, when it comes to balancing uh, you know, financial or personal financial needs, uh, what uh, what you everyone wants to do to support the family and uh, I, I mean uh, pursuing intellectual interests and doing research. Of course, I mean in in our country because. Uh, for example, I, I'm speaking this from a think tank perspective because I've been working at a think tank for for uh, uh, a few years. Uh, I would say that compared to private sector, of course, uh, the the level of financial incentive that people in, people in think tanks uh, are getting, uh, there's still a lot to be desired. Mm -hmm. that's, 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 what, that's how I put it. There's a lot yeah. to be desired. Uh, not only compared to private sector, but also compared to uh, other countries like uh, our neighbors or uh, uh, people in other regions. But for me personally, I would say that, of course, the pay, uh, the, the pay still, there's still a lot to be desired, but at least I can uh, do what I am, in, what I am interested in. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so basically it is a trade-off. It's a yeah. trade-off between, uh, okay, uh, making more money, mm. And also uh, try to try to to pursue your uh, to chase your interest. Yeah, you cannot. Have, yeah, I, I don't think it's it's easy for anyone to have it both way. Mm -hmm. We have to make it. We need to make a trade off. Yeah. And what kind of trade off that you are making? What kind of uh, of uh, personal uh, balances that you are making? It depends. Goes back to what we talked about before. It depends on. Uh, personal condition, timelines, and, uh, and other moving pieces that uh, everyone needs to decide for his or herself. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, that, that, I totally agree with you. 
and also doing something you like is is the best way to for your mental well-being and also for your for i mean everything you like is always better you can do it better that's that's a, the only thing that i believe is important Wong Kim Kong's the question is also uh, is point to you because you also mentioned about the financials, uh, uh, comparisons, and and also, of course, being a scholar, you know yourself, you're not going to be rich, you're not going to be wealthy, but <laughs> how you cope with it, your family condition, maybe <laughs> your 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 wife or maybe your your relative will ask you, oh, you you become a scholar, but. Uh, what about making money and, and so on? So you might have a lot of decisions to make at your own stage of life. And you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, I think this is the big issue that have prevent you know, a lot of people from contributing uh, intellectually to society, you know, in terms of writing or research or publication or or, or doing talk sharing uh, through lecture, for example, uh, because they need to save some time to to do other activity that can generate income. So uh, we talk about the case of university lecturer. A lot of uh, university lecturer they are focused on teaching to get the, the income from teaching, not uh, conducting research, spending time on research because. If you spend a lot of time on research, you don't have time for teaching. So what? how can you support yourself and your family? So this is the big issue. However, there, when there, there are issues, but there are also, you know, kind of, you know, opportunity in here. If, if people, there are still people who keep contributing to society uh, for intellectual, but they keep sharing their knowledge through, you know, video or talk or, or through writing publication still, uh, because like uh, uh, somebody have mentioned, you know, uh, it, it, somehow it's not just only income or money. They have their own interest, pursuing their interest or chasing their dream. Uh, for example, if you choose to be a scholar or an intellect and you want to contribute uh, to society as uh, intellectually, not financially, for example, Researcher, their main role is to generate knowledge, not to generate money. For example, if you want to be uh, rich, you not being a researcher or, or intellectual, you do the business uh, or other things. So uh, it can be, this is your choice. Somehow people choose to be like that. Uh, they, they need to be balanced between uh, raising their profile as an intellectual or as a scholar and maintain, maintaining their just descent line, not rich you know, not too rich, but just a normal one that you still can survive, but not as a rich uh, person, but just a normal intellectual uh, person. So uh, once you reach that stake, you need to teach yourself that, okay, this is your life. You are now uh, your, your way of life. I mean, uh, you can't be you know, you need to to walk that path and accept the reality that you are uh, pursuing this kind of a dream or, or or kind of way of life. Yeah, mm. so that can help console you, you when you compare yourself to other people who are yeah. richer than you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's hard to stop comparing, but I think at least we can prepare. You can at least try to console, like you mentioned, <laughs> console yourself that it can be better. Yeah, in a way that if you think about a value that we we make, a value that we earn, sorry, we earn from what we've been doing. I think just compared to money, I think that something cannot be bought. So that's the good things about what you're yeah, doing. What yeah, you're I like, doing. I like yeah. I like to interrupt. Somehow you have like inner satisfaction. Like yeah. okay, you you have your money is not a lot, but you you kind of have. You achieve something that you want to. For example, I want to be a researcher. I want to publish article and put my work out there, and people see it. So when I see a lot of people read it, for example, or share it, talk about it, they come to me say, saying that, "Oh, I have read your article," mm -hmm. and people from overseas contacting me uh, through my article. So I feel like okay, so that kind of 
one part of the dream that you want and you achieve mm. it. So you you have satisfaction and you you can live with that, you know, mm. although you don't have satisfaction with other aspects like financial aspects. So, yeah. you know, there are still, you know, ups and downs here, but somehow you found you find a pathway in the middle that you get some, you lose some, and you satisfy with what you are doing. So you keep doing it and, and keep, you know, contribut contributing in, in that way. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mark Lukung, for adding up this very important part. I think it is it is good to know and it's it's good to to understand this as well. Well, I think uh, somebody actually uh, you did your degree in United States and also Wong Kum Kung also did your degree in Australia in, in, in University of Queensland. And then I think you both my health students, uh, well, because it's often that's not just Cambodia, but many developing country and even developed country as well. Did we see intellectual or maybe people getting opportunity to study abroad? And then they're not returning home. So they build their own life there, no longer want to be connected with their motherlands and so on. So for me, it's, it might be some sort of say part of the story because maybe you're not able to at least do your part to contribute back to your society because you're, build, you're building your own life in the new land and so on. So. That's an important part I want to hear from you, so just from Tumbat first. Is there any way that we can engage with them to make sure that they can be encouraged or motivated to at least act, not so much actively, but meaningfully uh, contributed a part to the national development from abroad, not return to the country, but the way that we can engage with them and then allow them to do their parts in this. Uh, I think the pro the, the we, we are talking about uh brain drain like yeah, uh, the brain drain people edu edu educated people who move abroad or who, or who choose not to come back to their home country but uh, just because uh because of job opportunity because of financial incentive or a lot of other factors that may come into play um but i but i believe that although we may have people who choose not to come back to cambodia or any other country they still can play a role mm -hmm. and one of the example is because of the uh, broad access of the internet of technologies and uh, public platforms and websites i believe that if everyone can contribute no matter no, no matter where he or she is uh, so for example if you are interested in writing or if you're interested in doing research uh, you don't have to be in Cambodia. Uh, in, in, in some uh, types of research, you don't have to be in Cambodia. You can just work online. Mm. Uh, if you uh, want to be more involved, you know, in collecting primary data and interviewing people on the ground, of course, you have. You are supposed to be here. Mm. Uh, so my point is, is, is that uh, it, it, it's it has to do a lot with personal choice. Mm. It has to do a lot with personal yeah. choice. It has to do with uh, the kind of job environment, the kind of uh, living condition that he or she is uh, is trying to pursue, and uh, but again, uh, no matter where you are, you, you can still you can still contribute. For example, like you, Bong, you 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 right now you're you're not in Cambodia, but you still are, you are able to bring both of us together for this great discussion. So this is just uh, one example of how uh, intellectual can contribute uh, both abroad uh, from from afar on, on, on at the ground level. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sambat. So it's, it's back to the point that we actually raised. Uh, there's need to be another element is willingness of every one of us. Wong Kim Kung, do you have anything to add when it comes to this? And maybe you have some sort of initiative that could bring them yeah. together in a way that, uh, yeah. Okay, I, I like to add to what uh, Sambat has uh, mentioned. Uh, uh, although they're not, in the country, they are overseas. They can also contribute to to back to the home country. Yeah, I agree this uh, with this one. However, the the level of contribution would be different because they are not in the country. Uh, uh, they can contribute through, for example, uh, collaboration with with researcher. Uh, we talk about intellectual. So talk about maybe people work, work working in university, for example, working as professor overseas. Uh, yeah, I think the best way to solve the issue, this brain drain issue, is that 
people in our country in Cambodia need to approach them, approach the living overseas. Okay, because mm -hmm. all you know, one professor uh, who are good at you know science or I O or education in the U.S. or in Canada or in Australia. So we in in the country in Cambodia, you can approach them and ask 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 them to maybe you know uh, teach a course or or conduct a workshop or or offer a seminar, kind of sharing sharing experience, sharing knowledge, and uh, sharing expertise. So in that way, we 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 engage them actively, not just waiting for them to to you know to contribute, but you you ask for their contribution. I think this is a way that can enhance their contribution back to the society, you know, back home. So it's good to, you know, ask them to be a guest speaker, for example, in an in a seminar, in a workshop. I think now we have this. I, I can see through Facebook uh, we have done this, you know, some institution uh, have done this engage uh, intellectual overseas. However, we we want to see more. We want to mm -hmm. see more, not just because there are some institutions who have kind of strong network they know a lot of people overseas they keep having you know this kind of conversation or discussion or, or, or seminar or workshop however other institution other university for example or think tank do not have this opportunity so if we can expand that we can you know col collaborate inside the country and also reach out to intellectual or professor or or anybody who are highly educated overseas and uh, they can come to you this way and and now it's good because we have zoom we have yeah. you know we can do online uh, training online workshop or, or seminar and it would be uh, very important would contribute a lot to especially in terms of uh, uh, stimulate interest in research or writing or uh, developing expertise in that area and also uh, make pe more people you know want kind of give them a source of inspiration to be like like those who are living overseas, who who look like great, you know, uh, being a professor overseas, for example, yeah. So we need to be, you know, proactive our side to engage them rather than waiting for them to to come to us. Yeah. Thank you, thank you both of you for very thoughtful uh, answer to this. I think uh, it seemed that we have covered all. The aspects of very important uh, the, the topic that we have right now from the definition to uh, the roles of intellectual can play to how can we engage with those people abroad to to make sure that they can actively contribute uh, and then we are moving to the, the end part of our uh, discussion so uh, before we end I also want to uh, have each of our speakers to share their final message to uh, our audience out there, especially those who might want to know more about uh, their own roles as a citizen, as intellectual, because they also have fit in the definition that we've provided earlier. So maybe just uh, uh, 15 seconds or 20 seconds each for, for you, but starting with some buts. Uh, thank you, Bong, for the question. Uh, the, the last thing I want to say is that uh, if, uh, I would encourage everyone to uh, contribute in any way you can. Uh, for example, uh, you can run projects, you can write articles, do research, uh, whatever it is that you care about, whatever issue that uh, interests you, uh, you should do something about it. You should do something about it. Uh, no matter what kind of job that you are doing at the moment, uh, I believe that it would be good for our country that all of us keeps our nation interest in mind. Uh, do what is best, uh, do our part, play our role, no matter small or big it is. It contribute, whether in the long run or in the short run, as long as it contribute to our country, I think that is good. Mm. Thank you, Sambat. And also be optimistic. Yeah. Yeah. Bong Kung Kung. Please, yeah. 
Well, please unmute. Okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> I have background noise. I like to mute or mute. Yeah. Um, I have my daughter behind me, and no, sorry. Okay, so I want to con to break my recommendation into two group for for the younger generation and for intellectual themselves. So for the younger generation, I think. Uh, referring back to what Sabat had mentioned earlier is about education, educate themselves. So try to study hard, try to, uh, you know, uh, explore what's, what's happening in society, uh, keep reading, for example. So this is the way that you can build your knowledge, your skill to become an intellectual or a scholar. I've seen some young researchers, or young uh, people done this. Some of them, you know, try their, try their best. For example, Sabat is one example. He he uh, he's young, but he doing a lot, uh, especially in terms of writing or research. For example, and if a lot of people do this, a lot of young people do this. We will have more intellectual, more educated people in our society, and that will be will create a kind of environment that is good, that it conducive for other people to grow as well. Because when you see your friend or other your friend friend, you know contribute this way, become researcher, become a scholar, you will have kind of a pressure or, or interest in, you know, wanting to be like that as well. So education and also try to be proactive. So I, I, I want them to be more proactive. For example, they want to do something and they don't know how to do. They need to approach those who have done that before them. For example, you want to write an opinion piece. You have never done that before. So how can you do it? You, you can ask for help for, for those who have done that. And you need to be proactive in doing that. Not because nobody will come to you if you don't go and ask, okay, can you help me? You know, I have an article. Can you check or can you help me? Give them, you know, co some compensation, for example. Uh, somehow build your connection uh, with them. So education, educate yourself and try to be proactive. For intellectual, I want to talk about agency. Agency is their ability to exercise their, uh, you know, they have they try to, to, to be, to increase their self-motivation, increase their commitment. For example, we live in the same society. Some people contribute a lot, some seem not a lot. So why, what's happening? So if we can increase our agency, you know, build your commitment, make it stronger, and you know, try to contribute in whatever way that you can. That will help other people see the value in what you're doing, and they want to do that as well. For example, if we have more people trying to do good thing for society, other people will will follow. You know, we follow because uh, it like become a a norm in society where people contribute self you know, selflessly to society and it will create a, a good environment uh, for everybody to contribute. So both way for young people and also for intellectual themselves, yeah. Thank you both Bong Kim Kong and Sambat. I think, uh, yes, that our two speaker here already mentioned prioritize education and at the same time be proactive. Make sure that you reach out to people you believe uh, maybe a great mentor to you in, in pursuing your own dream or maybe to to, up, to upgrade your skill or anything. Like our speaker here, so they have different expertise. You might want to reach out to them, like Sambat in front policy, in different policy, in touch. You can reach out to him if uh, you really want to know more about it. I think he's also a lecturer and also at the same time, he is a researcher. So make sure that you reach out to them and Wong Kim Kong as well they, he has his own uh, space for engagement his own uh, education forums where you can be a part of it as a, a young researcher I would say because they Ryan published paper so the two speaker here will be your great sources so you can actually reach out to them uh, in a coming day or so so I believe that it will be a, a sort of important uh, ways of building your ability to contribute once again thank you so much uh, both of uh, you for joining uh, uh, our program today i think we have learned a lot from all of you and also you set the lights on how we can contribute especially myself as well as the other people who might keep questioning about their roles 
So thank you so much, Mo Kim Kung and Sambat. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone, to mm -hmm. for uh, listening to. Yeah. Okay, so thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Exactly day. one hour, seven yeah, o'clock. Exactly yeah, exactly one hour. <laughs> wow. <laughs> thank Good you. time shipping. Yeah. So bye-bye, yeah? Yeah. Yeah.